Now to finish our discussion of the absolute temperature, finally I would like to mention some remarkable physical phenomena that occur at low temperatures. Uh, first of all, if you have a spin system and you go to a very low temperature in a magnetic field, you will have a perfect orientation of electron spins. And this is going to give you a very strong, strong permanent magnet. The other thing is, uh, if you cool some materials below a critical temperature, you can achieve zero electrical uh, resistance. This phenomenon is known as uh, superconductivity and the critical temperature that you need is for example um, 7.2 Kelvin for a lead. This is readily achievable using uh, liquid helium cooling. Uh, another remarkable physical phenomenon is zero viscosity, that is resistance to flow uh, in a fluid, that's called superfluidity. And the best example for this one is the critical temperature 2.18 Kelvin for liquid helium. So these are some uh, new physics, interesting phenomena that are enabled by going down to low temperatures. So uh, the conclusion is that low temperature physics basically has a rich uh, inventory of items uh, that are remarkable and basically due to quantum phenomena that are occurring at these very low temperatures. Observation of the remarkable quantum phenomena. Now, how do we achieve these uh, really low temperatures where we uh, observe these interesting quantum phenomena? Uh, the first design is called a Dewar flask. Uh, so this is how we store uh, what we call cryogens. Uh, so the Dewar flask consists of a jacket which is under vacuum. The inner surfaces are silvered, uh, so this vacuum is going to act as our uh, thermal insulator. The inner uh, surfaces that are silvered will be reflectors, it will reflect the uh, heat. And we have the cold liquid which is thermally isolated from the surroundings, that's called the cryogen. Uh, inside this flask and this flask when it is ob obviously covered uh, with another thermal insulating thermal insulating cover here is going to uh, store uh, cryogens for a long time things like uh, liquid helium or liquid nitrogen this is mostly for liquid nitrogen a uh, better design is called a double dewer um, because this vacuum is not going to be perfect. You will have some thermal contact with the environment. So the double dewer is based on the idea that we use two dewers uh, where the jacket in between the dewers is filled with liquid nitrogen. So that's going to be uh, keeping, uh, in addition to having this thermal insulator, we have a rather cold 
uh, temperature cryogen that is uh, in between the two divers. So uh, you have the liquid helium uh, inside and liquid nitrogen in between the two uh, vacuum uh, vacuumed jackets and basically these jackets are vacuumed by using a pump um, and the surroundings are basically at a room temperature. Uh, so if we also apply this pump uh, to pump on the liquid helium uh, inside this duver, uh, basically this pump can uh, give us a reduced pressure uh, on the liquid uh, cryogen that is inside the uh, double dewer. So this is going to reduce uh, the pressure P bar on top of the uh, liquid. So the vapor pressure is reduced. Uh, that's going to reduce the boiling point. So by pumping on uh, liquid helium uh, we can go down to 1 Kelvin uh, without any trouble. This is just an effect of reducing the vapor pressure. Uh, as the pressure is reduced, the temperature is uh, reduced. The boiling point goes down to 1 Kelvin. Uh, another trick you can use is instead of using helium-4, if you use a helium-3 isotope, that has a slightly uh, lower um, boiling point compared to helium-4 uh, and we also pump on this helium-3 we can go down to 0 0.3 kelvins uh, easily. Now if we want to do this really cool physics at extremely low temperatures uh, in the micro Kelvin scale, milli Kelvin or micro Kelvin scale, there is a technique called adiabatic demagnetization where we uh, have a strong magnetic field um, applied to a spin system and when we uh, cool this system down to very low temperatures, when we remove the magnetic field, in order to randomize the spin system will absorb heat and temperatures in a micro Kelvin uh, scale is easily achievable using this technique. Um, so basically we need these really low temperatures in order to observe these remarkable uh, quantum phenomena uh, that are occurring at extremely low temperatures.